Now that I've got a few hours under my belt in Predecessor, I thought it would be a great idea to create a list of my top 10 things that you need to know to help you improve at the game if you're just starting out. And who knows, maybe even if you've been playing for a while, there still might be one or two things on this list that are helpful to you. I've tried to give you a wide variety of tips, so some of them apply throughout the entire game, however others are situational, so I'll try to keep them in order of the natural flow of the game. And as we jump into tip number one, I'd like to thank Omeda Studios for sponsoring this video, and let's get straight into it. The first tip will be obvious to some, however it is arguably the most important thing to know, especially depending on which other MOBAs you have played in the past. And that is the fact that you must last hit minions, or you do not get any gold and you will not be able to buy any items. Obviously, you do gain a small trickle of gold as the game progresses, but you are certainly going to fall behind if you are not last hitting minions. More importantly, however, the second and perhaps more vital part of this tip is that every third wave will spawn a big minion who gives you around three times the amount of gold of regular minions. So make sure you keep an eye out for them. And as with all minions, if you didn't know, when their health bar turns red, that means that they're within kill range of your auto attack. So especially early game when you are trying to prioritize money and last hits rather than just pushing lanes as quick as you can, try your best to not actually hit any minions, just let your minions battle it out and just snipe the last hits. Because arguably, pushing your lane is a bad thing to do, because you leave yourself exposed to ganks from the enemy's jungle. So the early game wants to be spent farming, staying passive and staying safe. For tip number two, if you do happen to overextend, please do not forget about Blink. If we've got any StarCraft fans in the house, I love that this shares the name of the same ability that the Stalkers can use in StarCraft 2. Blink does exactly what Stalkers can do with it in StarCraft 2. It allows you to instantly teleport a small distance in the direction you are facing. And you can use this to help you survive so many otherwise certain death situations. If you overextend, if you get ganked, if you go into an engagement that you weren't ready for, or even if you just get caught out when jungling and you need a quick getaway, don't forget that as long as it's not on cooldown, you've always got Blink available to you. And once you have used it, it has a 5 minute cooldown. Of course, more advanced players may even use this offensively and use it to try and snipe a quick kill even under a turret if they're feeling confident, so watch out for people using it offensively against you as well. Tip number three is not to be afraid to leave auto buy on whilst you're learning the game. Auto buy is actually really impressive because it will give you the technically best items for your particular character and role. And the second part of that sentence is very important. That means if you are playing the same character on two different roles, auto buy will recommend you different items. So if you have a character who is good in off lane or jungle or mid lane or carry, just as a couple of examples, depending on the role you choose when going into the game, that will change the auto buy options. And this is a really good thing because it means it's not generic, it knows what it's doing and it genuinely is always going to offer you some really good situational items. Obviously, as you become more experienced and you're willing to try out more bold plays, you may want to shake up the meta and be a bit more daring with your builds. Therefore, turn this off, experiment, look up build guides on YouTube, whatever you want to do really to get good at the game. But starting off, don't worry about leaving auto buy on, it genuinely is pretty damn good. Tip number four is to not forget about your potions and your other items. I specifically have always been terrible in MOBAs for placing down my wards. Wards are fantastic for giving your team vision and you can use them pretty damn frequently. So don't forget to heal up with your potions. Don't forget to place your wards down. And once you have completed your crest quest, make sure you are using your active ability on that main item as well. Because that can be a complete game changer in combat. Crests are legendary items with game-changing effects. There are loads of them, and once you have completed your crest quest, they can then be evolved into multiple other items. So choose wisely, and most importantly, don't forget to use them. Tip number five is all about crowd control abilities and stuns. Chain stunning people is perhaps the most terrifying thing you can do to your enemies in this game. 
because if you didn't know, Predecessor follows different rules to the majority of PvP games, even taking World of Warcraft as an example, or other MOBAs you will start to experience what is known as diminishing returns. And that means if you use stun after stun after stun on someone, they won't all operate at maximum effectiveness. The stun time will start to be reduced and the third chain stun you use is only about half as effective as the first. However, that isn't the case in Predecessor. What it says is what it does, which means you can use devastating combos and keep entire groups of enemies stunned for literal seconds at a time, which is more than enough time for a complete team wipe. That's one reason I love Grux so much. Not only is he reasonably tanky with some pretty good damage output, but most of his abilities do a knockback, a knockup, or a stun. And he can get himself out of some pretty terrifying situations if you know how to use him correctly. And off the back of this tip, another thing to note is that because of how powerful crowd control abilities and stuns are in this game, try to eventually learn every character. You want to know exactly who you're up against and what abilities they could potentially use against you. Because you don't want this awful chain stun situation happening to you. For tip number six, we're going to be taking a look at Fangtooth. Fangtooth is one of the two big bosses in the river, along with Mini Prime and Orb Prime, who we'll cover in the next tip. But arguably, Fangtooth is the most important of the two. So be very, very careful letting the enemy team chain kill Fangtooth. Fangtooth is a big old dinosaur who gives you permanent buffs to your entire team for the rest of the game. It will spawn at the 5 minute mark and then every 5 minutes after it's been killed. And it gives a variety of buffs that all stack. So the very first buff, as you can see here, my team just killed it without me. And river buffs now last 50% longer. So what this means is the various coloured jungle mobs in and around the river, all of the buffs they give you, be it pink, red, blue, whatever, they now all last 50% longer. The next time you kill Fangtooth, you get an 8% bonus out of combat move speed. So you're just going to be outmaneuvering your enemy better than before. And finally, from the third kill onwards, you get a 6% increase to your power, and that stacks. Fourth kill is 12%, fifth kill is 18%. So the more a team are allowed to kill Fangtooth, the more powerful they're going to become, and it starts to get really out of control. So try to make sure you're the team killing Fangtooth, or at the very least, stop the enemy team from doing so. Next up, let's talk about the other big important river buff, and that is Mini Prime. He starts out as Mini Prime, and will be replaced by Orb Prime at the 20 minute mark. Mini Prime isn't really that crucial because he doesn't give you anything permanent. However, as you can see here, he is soloable. So it's quite easy to go and snag him for a few temporary buffs, just so that the enemy team can't get to him. However, when it turns into Orb Prime at the 20 minute mark, this is another thing entirely, and you want to grab this as soon as possible, because this will give your whole team bonus damage, bonus health and mana regeneration, and buff all nearby minions, meaning you can push towers so much more effectively. Orb Prime, I don't believe, is soloable. Definitely not by someone of my caliber, at least. He absolutely wrecked me. But luckily, because of tip number two, I was able to blink out of there and I'm still alive. Now, as we are talking about all of these river buffs and all of these jungle mobs, to make it easier to track these things, you can actually see when the camps are coming back based on their cooldown on the minimap in the top corner. As you can see, there is a circle that fills up and the more full that circle is, the closer that particular camp is to respawning. This is exactly what I used in tip number six to make sure I was getting to Fangtooth as quickly as possible. So as you can see, just as I'm rounding the corner and getting to Fangtooth, that larger circle has now disappeared. That means he has respawned. And you can use this to keep track of all the important buffs around the river. Tip number nine is the importance of defending inhibitors. Unlike in other MOBAs, inhibitors can shoot. They are just as effective at defending themselves as towers are. 
However, once an inhibitor is taken down, they will respawn. I think it's either three or five minutes. I forget exactly. Maybe someone could clarify in the comments for me. But even though they do respawn, they do not regain their ability to shoot. They can no longer defend themselves and they can now be retaken down by absolutely anyone if left uncontested. This means it is very crucial to stop inhibitors from going down in the first place because they are far easier to defend. Also, if you didn't know, when an inhibitor does go down, super minions start spawning in that lane. These are very, very tanky minions, which makes it super easy to start pushing the core. However, when the inhibitor comes back up, super minions will stop spawning. But as I say, they are so much more important to defend than towers because they lose the ability to defend themselves. And the tenth and final tip is a mechanic that's unique to the core. The core, if you didn't know, as soon as you blow this up, you win the game. Unlike towers and inhibitors, it doesn't have a single target attack, it has an AoE attack. And the damage that it does is spread throughout everything that it is currently hitting. This means the less minions that are around the core, the more damage you take. And because it's dealing damage to all minions evenly, it can very quickly go from having 10 minions with you to having one. And suddenly you are being chunked for a lot of your health. So don't just keep an eye on that minion counter in the middle of the screen. Physically look around and see if all your minions are about to get wiped out because you want to back off because you can and will get very easily ganked if you're left at the core alone. The core itself is pretty squishy and if your whole team are coordinating the attack it shouldn't take long to go down once you get there but it can do some pretty big damage if you don't have any minions around soaking up that damage for you so just something to be aware of. And now my friends hopefully with these top 10 tips you'll be able to jump into your next game far more confident with what you're doing and be able to achieve victory after victory. And with that all that's left for me to say is thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing day. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.